we're going to start off with some general questions. What grades have you taught? I started out teaching third grade. I moved to second grade and taught that for 15 years. And I have recently moved to kindergarten and I have been here, this is my third year in kindergarten. What grade do you like teaching the most? Uh, each grade is different, I like them all, but so far I'm enjoying kindergarten a lot. It is a lot of work to prep for and get ready for for kindergarten, but it's the most rewarding. They're coming in with no knowledge of how to sit, how to learn, um, and so it's fun to learn by creating and making and playing. Thank you. How do you make yourself a better teacher? You reflect daily on the lessons that you taught. You see what went well, you change what didn't went well for the next time, next year, or the next week that you are gonna teach it. You go to outside workshops and training in different areas that are your weaknesses to improve your teaching. You look for resources such as your coworkers, people in the building that can help you to become a better teacher. Um, when did you decide to become a teacher? I was a sign language interpreter in the classroom with a sixth grade students and being in the classroom with them made me want to have my own classroom. So I went back to school and got my teacher education certificate and became a teacher after already being in the classroom with deaf students. What is your approach on discipline and how do you maintain it? Um, we try to do love and logic here, and that's with natural consequences. But one area that we work on is finding out what zone you are in. They're learning what zone they're in. If they are in the blue zone, they're kind of slow, sad, they're running low. Obviously, the green zone is where we want them to be, good to go. They're happy, calm, feeling okay, focused, and ready to learn. They have to know when they're in this yellow zone, they're frustrated, they're worried, they're silly, they're wiggling around, they're unfocused and they've lost control. And then <clears throat> there's the red zone where they're mad or angry, they are hitting, yelling, refusing. We talk to them, we give them their space, I ask them um, to change what they're doing. If they don't change what they're doing, we talk about, well, I'll have you fix it and I'll let you know when that will be and then they have time to actually think about it and I get back to them later in the day on what we're actually gonna do for the consequence. Okay, um, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing teachers today? Um, I think trying to keep the students' attention is one of the biggest problems that we have. Students are on a, some sort of technology, an iPad, a phone, Xbox, video games, so much when they're not in school that when they do get to school, they don't know how to just sit and listen with their whole body when a teacher is standing in front of them teaching. So I think technology is something that causes a big problem right now. Perfect. How do you communicate with your parents? Um, there's several ways that I communicate with parents. We have definitely emails that we go back and forth with. I have a newsletter that I send home every Friday informing them of what we did this week and what's coming up the following week so that they can look forward to the letters or the sounds or the power words that we're working on. Um, we, I have phone calls where I call and contact the parent. There is an app called Seesaw that we use as well that I send out reminders of what to bring to school or if there's something different happening at school. And then there's paper copies that we send home in their mailboxes. Okay, um, how do you include parents in their child's classroom? Um, I kind of explained a couple of them. One is the newsletter. This way they can ask their child different questions pertaining to the week. I'll let the parents know what story we're reading, what we're working on for comprehension, what words we're working on. I 
let them know what math we're working on so they can practice at home. But the best thing is the app called Seesaw where the students actually pick up the app iPad and they can take pictures of their work, they can record themselves reading, they can draw and send it to their parents so the parents actually see them working throughout the day in the classroom. Talking about your weaknesses, how do you go about teaching something that is not your strength? Um, I reach out and find other resources that are out there. I go to my coworkers and see what they have, what they know, um, what works for them. Um, and then from their ideas, from searching on the internet, I bring back, I study, I learn what should go well. I put together a lesson plan and then I go ahead and try it. Perfect. How do you accommodate students with special needs? Most students with special needs have a para that goes along with them. So that person helps them throughout the day. When it comes to certain work, sometimes they only have to do half of it or part of it. Maybe they only have to complete five questions out of the ten. There's times that I might write it and they have to trace over it. Or I write one word, they write the next word. Most of the time, the things that they do are definitely not the same as the other students in the classroom. And what about your high students? How do you challenge them? We do personal learning in the classroom a lot during math and during reading. So when the students test out of the skills that they know, they move on to the next skills that are above them so they continue to grow. Um, there's projects at the end as well that include all the skills along the way but make them do a little bit more thinking. And it's something that they enjoy that's fun and challenge them to do a little bit more. How do you determine each child's learning ability? There are a variety of ways. We have at Action 100 where we have an ERLA. We check their reading goal by how many letters they know, the sounds of the letters, um, if they know any words when they first come in, and then it progresses as the year goes on. We have um, pre-tests for math skills to see what skills they know there. If they've mastered the skill, we move them on to the next. Um, we do a lot of verbal sit-down one-on-one assessments where we have them count to 100 for us or they recognize numbers for us. Um, but a lot of it with kindergarten is one-on-one -on -one assessments. What would you do if one of your students was without something they needed? Um, I would work on getting it for them. One of my students did not have tennis shoes that fit her any longer, so I just happened to have a pair of tennis shoes at home for my daughter, brought those in, gave those to her. I have coats from years past and hats and gloves, so when students don't have them, I have a couple pair of snow pants they can borrow or use, or even at times I will give them what they need. Some students need snacks because they're hungry after school on their bus ride home, so I provide them with that. Um, I sometimes provide parents with the resources where they can go to a food shelf and pick up extra food, or where there are places that they can get clothing as well. So trying to inform the parents if they are okay with it to reach out and find the resources that they need. All right, uh, what would you do if one of your students refused to do any classroom assignments? I'd talk, walk up to the child, I, I would ask what the problem was, um, ask them why they weren't working, we'd have a short discussion, I'd ask them please go ahead and do the work and I'd walk away. I'd come back in a little bit to see if they had done it. If they hadn't, I'd say, oh man, that's a bummer. I wish that you would choose to do your work, but don't worry about it. We'll find another time to do it and I'd walk away. It's the student's choice to do it, but they will find a time to do it if they refuse. They might be doing it at recess time or their play time, um, and they'll figure this out as the time goes on. But it's kind of their choice if they're gonna do it or not. It's just when. Thank you.